Okay, in this video I want to talk about some of the causes for Australia, of Australia's current account deficit. So the reasons why Australia consistently has a current account deficit and the difference between what we call a structural current account deficit and a cyclical current account deficit. So we'll start off with the structural current account deficit. Basically, the way to look at it, just like cyclical and structural unemployment, structural regardless of where we are in the business cycle, cyclical because of the business cycle. So as a starting point, structural regardless of the business cycle, cyclical because of changes in the business cycle. So the structural CAD is basically the CAD that exists when the economy is running sort of its average growth rate, so at around 3%. It's the CAD that's not related to like the level of demand in the economy. It's related to when we remove the cyclical component and just focus on the underlying factors that cause the CAD to go up and down. So the main reason Australia has a big current account deficit is because Australia is a relatively young country. So we've only been around for 200 years. And throughout that 200 years, we've been constantly been going into more and more debt because we need that money to finance our investment spending. Firms need the money to finance their investment spending when they invest in capital and machinery and infrastructure. So the idea is that as a young country, we need a lot of money to fuel these businesses, to fuel investment, but Australians don't save enough money. So there's an imbalance between national investment and national savings. And what that means is that when you take out a loan, when you go to get a loan from when, you know, when you're running a business, if you want to take out a loan from an Australian bank, that Australian bank needs to borrow from overseas because there's not enough savings in Australia. The money can't just come out of thin air. So what the banks do is they borrow from overseas. So the structural CAD is related to the fact that we have a young economy that requires a lot of funds from overseas in order to, to invest and build new infrastructure and things like that. So we issue debt or we, or we go into um, but we, we issue equity to foreign investors um, and they're recorded as credits in the financial account initially. But because we have so much debt, because we're a young country that relies on this debt from overseas, we have a high level of net foreign liabilities. We owe countries a lot of money um, in terms of debt and they also have a lot of equity investment in Australia. And the problem with that is that leads to more debits in the net primary income section of the CAD. So there's a lot of interest, there's a lot of profits, there's a lot of dividends flowing overseas because of our high level of debt. So basically to sum up, Australia's structural CAD is sort of related to net primary income. The fact that we are a new, a new developing nation that has a lot of debt because we need that debt to grow. The interest component of the CAD is the structural component because we're a young country. The structural component exists, will continue to exist regardless of where we are in the business cycle. The other part of the structural deficit, so part of it's due to the fact that we have a lot of debt because of this constant need for investment. The other part relates to the fact that we have supply side problems in our country. Australia generally runs a CAD because locally made goods and services are generally dearer than overseas products. So Australia has high wages, we're not as efficient as other countries and therefore we borrow, we, sorry, we have a lot of importing because it's cheaper um, for us to import from overseas. So one fact is that um, there's a lack of national savings and to fill the national savings investment gap we need to borrow which boosts interest. The other part is related more to the balance of merchandise trade and net services that stems from the fact that our costs of production are higher and we're less efficient and have higher wages than other countries. Um, Australia's difficulty in remaining internationally competitive due to high cost structures and wages and low levels of efficiency. We are not in the top 20 performing countries for labour market efficiency, technological readiness, so the economy is not as adapted as much technologically, or business sophistication. And all of those lead to lower efficiency, therefore make us less competitive and put pressure on us to raise the cat. Um, so really important that you recognise structural deficits caused by high levels of interest because of the high level of net foreign debt and that stems from us needing um, funds from overseas to fuel investment and it's also related to high cost structures, high wages, high, low levels of efficiency in Australia which mean we favour imports over exports. In terms of the cyclical causes of the CAD, that's related to movements in the business cycle. Whenever we are experiencing higher rates of growth, there's likely to be a higher current account to GDP ratio. So, and that's because there's more spending in the economy. So when the economy is booming, we're in a boom, there's generally more spending on imports and can potentially be less exports, but it's mainly related to increased import spending. The reasons why, so in when we're in a peak, there's strong levels of aggregate demand, there's a bigger gap between investments and savings, and the extra spending generally f spills over in towards imports. So we import more, people have got more money, there's more employment, there's also higher inflation in Australia, so we're more likely to import more because prices in Australia are higher. 
Businesses are also more likely to spend money investing. So they're going to be spending more money on imports, machinery, infrastructure. All of that flows through the current account as well. So the increased spending because of inflation, incomes and investment spending leads to bigger deficits in the balance of merchandise, trade and net services. Um, this also means that we borrow more during these periods, which increases interest as well. During a trough, there is generally more savings and less investment, reducing the value of the current account. We don't spend as much, there's not as much spending in imports, there's not as much investment spending. So overall, we experience higher CADs when, we're in a, when we have a high level of growth and lower CADs when we are in um, a trough or the low levels of economic activity. And that's related to the fact that we spend more in a peak. The relationship between growth and the CAD in recent times, when economic growth has been weak or less than 3%, the CAD is generally lower because of the lack of spending. In 2007, when we had skill shortages and high costs of production, high wages, that led to um, the CAD around 6%, but it was mainly due to cyclical factors. Other countries will be um, more worried if the CAD increases more because of structural factors, because the countries will know that that's likely to persist and it may become unsustainable. So other countries are going to be more worried when our CAD eventuates because of um, cyclical factors, as of, uh, sorry, structural factors as opposed to cyclical factors, because that's going to lead to us going um, for problems for our economy in terms of um, it, that CAD continuing for a long period of time. Thank you. <coughs>